So they added a brand new mode as part of the 1.15 update called Giant Infection. And in my opinion, it's basically a bait and switch. We were kind of promised that we would have Ground War Infected. And if you've actually played the mode, you know that you do not play any other map besides Anaya Palace, which has a 48 player cap compared to the larger ground war maps which have a 64 player player cap. So at least my overall feeling is that they've just taken the easy way out. They didn't want to incorporate the ground war infected mode on the other maps just because it was easier to up the player count on a map that was already within infected. So I think if you've already played that mode and infected, this will probably get boring really quick, even with the higher player count, but there are some really big positives to playing this particular mode within Modern Warfare while it is still available. So we'll be talking about all those various things in today's video. If you do enjoy it in any way, let me know by hitting that like button. I do have a goal of 500 likes. And if you're looking to find your way back for more Modern Warfare content, definitely consider subscribing with notifications on. So what another what really happens in these types of modes is they're slow for a very long period of time and then they accelerate really quickly out of nowhere. Basically once the tide is turned and there's enough infected to start actually overwhelming the survivors, it goes from 0 to 60 rather fast. And as you'll see for most of the gameplay, it looks like everyone kind of converges on one area as a survivor to kind of lock down and shoot infected as they come towards them. One of the important things to keep in mind is that a 30 kill streak will still get you that that tactical nuke so if you've never gotten one if you play this mode in a party it is very likely that you will get one if you guys actually run support for each other giving call outs allowing one person to get a majority of the kills and I bring up this particular aspect because there's still a lot of people that have gotten a nuke within the game whether they've gone on a 30 gun streak or a 50 gun streak whatever the case is they have already gotten a nuke within the game but it was prior to the 1.14 update that added the tactical nuke calling card so the full requirements to unlock the mighty mushroom calling card is that you have to get that 30 kill streak call in the tactical nuke so that's where you pull up the keypad you enter the few different numbers then there's a countdown where the nuke physically comes in and hits the ground and kills everyone on the map yourself included and i know that's obvious to some people but there's people that have gotten the nuclear streak but they did not get the opportunity to actually call in the tactical nuke and have it come impact the ground. If you do not do that second part, you will not get the calling card. So a good example of how this could happen is let's say you're going on a streak and you end up on a very long streak, but someone on your team is also on a long streak and they happen to get the 30 kill streak and call in the tactical nuke before you get your tactical nuke. Even if you get the 30 kills, 37 kills before that nuke actually hits the ground, you will not be able to call in your tactical nuke, which means you will not get the calling card. And I know when I was looking through Reddit and Twitter, there were people saying that even if you got the tactical nuke, called it in, you would not get the calling card. And when I actually asked the question on Twitter, a longtime subscriber, Harivi, that I've actually covered on the channel, he has like a thousand nukes in every cod or whatever the case, he responded and linked me a clip to exclusive Ace's stream, which I'll also link down in the description, where it actually showed him getting the nuke and then getting the new calling card immediately after the match. There we go. Finally got our new calling card with season two. Towards the bottom, maybe? Yeah, there it is. The mighty mushroom. So one of the craziest things about this specific mode is that you can gain a ton of XP as a survivor. So you're kind of rewarded for staying a little bit further back and letting a lot of your teammates die since you get rewarded with so much XP. I only played a few matches, but I ended up averaging around 20 to 30,000 XP with each individual match that only lasted between seven to 10 minutes. Also, the other part that is really important is that everyone's going to have the exact same loadout as a survivor, and this is different from match to match. Sometimes you'll load in with a SCAR, an M13, the Growl, the M4, an AK, and there is a variety of weapons that'll pretty much cycle through. And for the most part, they felt like they were random class setups. So every time I ended up getting the AK, it actually had a different set of attachments for the different times that I was actually able to utilize it. The only thing that was fairly consistent across the board is that they did not equip extended mags or an optic. So initially I wasn't gonna talk about this even though it's been in Call of Duty pretty much ever since they added infected, but I actually ran into a lobby where people were boosting for nuclears. And I'll talk about it in this video because I would highly recommend reporting these individuals that are actually boosting. And it's very easy to spot. They're gonna end up getting a ton of kills in the kill feed 
what you'll notice is that they continue to kill the same person over and over and over again. And pretty much what they do is they go find a corner of the map, one's a survivor, one's an infected, whoever's the infected, they place attack insert, get shot, and just repeat this process. And I didn't play a ton of matches, but this did happen in one of the few matches that I played, so I'm sure it's a problem, and people that are newer to Call of Duty might not necessarily know exactly what's going on because they've never experienced it before. And you'll notice it right away when someone's in that lobby and all of a sudden they have like 25 kills and the next closest person has three, there's typically something fishy going on. So overall, this is a cool party mode, but it gets stale really quick with the fact that there's only one map. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the video in some way. Let me know by hitting that like button if you're brand new to the channel, looking to find your way back. Definitely consider subscribing with notifications on. Do appreciate all the support on the channel. Thank you for watching as always. Have a great day.